Hello and welcome to the Leopolda County Board of Commissioners District 1 and 2 Candidate Forum, hosted by the League of Women Voters of Leopolda County in partnership with the Leopolda Enterprise and Traverse Area Community Media. My name is Tricia Denton and I am the president of the League of Women Voters of Leopolda County. Empowering voters, defending democracy, we strive for a democracy where every person has the right, the desire, the knowledge, and the competence to participate. The League of Women Voters is a national, nonpartisan political organization that for more than 100 years has encouraged the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League as an organization never endorses or opposes candidates or parties. We do make an effort to obtain factual information on ballot issues and candidates' views and share this information as widely as possible. We are very grateful to the candidates for participating in the process of informing voters through this forum. And a special thank you to our moderator, the Honorable Judge Mike Stepica, for volunteering his time to assist. Mike? Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Mike Stepka. I'm a judge in the 86th District Court of Leelanau Grand Counties. I welcome our candidates and you, the voters, to this important uh, community forum. The purpose of this election forum is to provide an opportunity for you to meet, learn about the qualifications, and hear the views of the candidates running for the positions of Leelanau County uh, Commissioner in Districts uh, 1 and 2. The District 1 candidates are Jamie Kramer and Rick Robbins. Both are present here tonight. Uh, District 2 candidates are Don Gallagher and James O'Rourke. Uh, Don Gallagher is present. Uh, James O'Rourke has declined uh, the offer to participate in the virtual candidate uh, forum uh, format. Uh, the format and guidelines are as follows. Uh, questions uh, for the forum have been submitted via email prior to this forum and screened uh, for propriety, clarity, relevance, and duplication. To begin, each candidate will give a two-minute prepared opening statement. Uh, then they will each have one minute to respond to a question previously submitted to them. Rotating who will speak first, the candidates will then respond to the questions that were submitted via email. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to each question. There will be no follow-up responses, but each candidate will be given two minutes for closing remarks once um, I've completed the time for questions. Okay, timing for answers begins when the candidate speaks. Uh, the meeting host uh, will uh, also notify when 10 seconds remain by raising her hand <clears throat> in the screen and closing her hand when time has elapsed. Okay. Uh, now each candidate, again, will have two minutes to give their opening statements. <laughs> Point toss was conducted prior to the forum to, get, or to determine who will go first. So we will begin with um, District 1 candidates. Um, and I'm forgetting for sure who went first here. That, that was Jamie, right? Uh, Mr. Robbins is up first. Rick Robbins, District 1 candidate and sitting will go first. So Rick. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Trish, uh, for the Women's League. Uh, voters to, uh, for putting us on. Thank you for your time, Judge Stepka, our Mike. Um, thank you, Don, for uh, joining in with Jamie and I, and uh, for the first time meeting Jamie. Uh, nice to meet you. And um, Okay, go from there. Well, first of all, I'm Rick Robbins. Um, I am the uh, current uh, commissioner for District 1 right now, running for re-election. I'm a uh, Grand Travers, Leon, Leon County uh, native. I grew up in Grand Travers, uh, moved out in Leon County about 12 years ago. My career was uh, law enforcement. I retired from Grand Travers County Sheriff's Department as a detective sergeant in 2001. From there, I um, left to uh, 
become Mr. Mom. And that led into two businesses. Uh, one is uh, um, as a court officer doing legal services for all the courts and uh, for the league or the attorneys in town, uh, evictions and uh, serving the papers and seizing property. And then I also started another business uh, where I do farm services for the local farmers, uh, uh, trucking and whatever services they need. Um, I have uh, three children, uh, Taylor, she's a 2020 graduate from Olivet. Josie's a 2022 graduate from MSU. And I had a son, Brandon, who passed away last May. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward for another term here. Uh, it seems like it's just started and it's ending and there's so much to learn in this job and there's still a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff we have to do to finish up and uh, more things are gonna be put on the table for us to uh, talk about and uh, work on. Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Rick. Uh, Jamie Kramer. Uh, also a district one candidate will go next. Fantastic. Thank you, Judge Mike. And uh, thank you to the League of Women Voters for allowing me to be here tonight. Um, my name is Jamie Kramer and I am uh, running for County Commission for District One. And um, my background is kind of varied. Uh, I am originally from Mesick, Michigan, which is just south of here. Um, and I grew up, uh, actually not a very wealthy person <laughs> uh, to a single mom. And um, then I went directly to New York City where I went to school um, and studied and lived in New York for a while. And I came back to Michigan um, quite some time ago and worked in uh, media as a journalist at seven and four. And then uh, I did morning show radio with Jack O'Malley for a number of years. Um, and recently, I have just started my own business uh, called Beyond Forests, where we take cremated remains of people and actually put them, um, right now we just, we're working uh, with a partnership with Sleeping Bear National Lakeshore, so um, in the Sleeping Bear National Lakeshore, and we're hoping to expand that to all national parks to give families an alternative uh, at the end of life. And I'm very proud of that. I have uh, two amazing children, one nine, uh, Keegan, she goes to Leland Montessori, and the other is 18 months. His name is Finley and uh, an incredible husband who backs me up completely. Um, I am super interested in uh, this position in the county um, because I have been a liaison for years, uh, seeking out expert advice, reporting on um, different things that are happening in our community. And I always believe that there are resources uh, to help us and assist us in these things. And that's why I'm interested in running for county commission. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jamie. And district uh, two candidate, uh, Don Gallagher. Don. Thank you, Mike. The Leon Enterprise, the League of Women Voters, and those who submit nice questions. My name is Don Gallagher, and I hope to represent District 2 on the Leonel Board of Commissioners. I'm a union electrician by trade and a farmer by choice. I lived in Leonel County for close to 40 years and hope to live for 40 more. I've been married to my wife, Colleen, for 39 years and have three grown children and 10 grandchildren. I believe I will make a very good candidate uh, commissioner because of my common sense, my past experience, and I just, um, I'm a really good listener and I look things through before I continue. Thank you. Thank you, Don. I think if we go to Jamie, is that correct, Tricia? We're gonna go to Don with the first question that was previously submitted. The three priorities? Yeah. All right, uh, Don, um, district two candidate, what are your top three priorities for Leelanau County? Thank you. Um, clean water for sure. I think we've made a good decision on the septic 
ordinance. Uh, natural resources, we have to uh, get, keep open land. And if open land is developed, it has to be done smartly. Uh, broadband, because of the pandemic, we have to you know, finish the broadband job and get everybody broadband. And of course, I'd like to try and keep taxes low. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, Jamie. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so my three items um, that I'm really passionate about are, of course, water. Um, we live in the water. We uh, are surrounded by water. Um, much of our uh, infrastructure and the way that we live is based off of tourism, mm -hmm. which also includes water. Um, so I think that's a really important topic. Also, child care. I am a living, breathing example of why we need child care uh, right now in Leelanau County. And I have multiple friends who have uh, faced the difficulties surrounding getting not only affordable childcare, but just access to childcare in general. Um, so that will definitely be uh, one of the issues that I um, am advocating for. Also intentional growth, really looking at all of the players uh, when it comes to how we grow and, uh, and move forward in, in the county. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Also District 1, uh, Rick Robbins. Rick? Well, one of my first uh, would be, uh, as a commissioner, we have to you know, maintain the budget and our county properties and make sure that they're balanced and uh, that we're, we're in budget and make sure that all the departments are funded and uh, they can operate the way they're supposed to to represent the uh, taxpayers of this county. Uh, Two would be the broadband. We've, we've just started. We still got a lot of work to do on that. There's areas that did not get covered. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that we still have a $1.8 million balance that we got to come up with to pay for this project that we've already started. Uh, the other ones is, you know, we got early childhood development. Millage will be coming up at the end of this, not this term now, but who's ever elected will have to be uh, dealing with that for the next millage. Uh, you know, we also got the, the septic that we've ordinance and the water that we've taken care of, but there's still more work that needs to be done. It just doesn't end with just getting an ordinance and uh, moving on from there. It's, it's gonna be continual. Um, so thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> now for the email uh, submitted questions and Trisha, does Rick start with this? Um, let's... Uh... Let's let Jamie go first and be in the hot seat first this time. Okay. Okay, so uh, Jamie is district one. Uh, here's the email question, Jamie. A large part of leadership and governance is relationship building. How would you characterize the level of civility, collaboration, respect, and nonpartisan cooperation among Board of Commission members, do you believe there's a need for improvement? And if so, what would you suggest to improve those relationships? And how would you work to bring more civility and bipartisanship to Board of Commissioner meetings? Sure, thanks, Mike. Um, so, uh, well, obviously I mentioned earlier that I worked with Jack O'Malley for several years and um, if anyone knows politics, uh, we kind of are on the varying scale uh, uh, of those two worlds. But uh, it's important to me to talk to people as if they're people. So when we're having a conversation, kind of really relationship building, as you mentioned, um, between two humans who have different varying views on things. Um, everyone has different likes and dislikes in this world. Um, if we can't manage to find some common ground and then move forward in how we talk about the bigger issues, then I, I feel like then that's when the things start to crumble underneath us. First, you find that common ground and then you build from there. So after that, then, you know, comes the issues and topics. So it's, it, it is that relationship building that is uh, foundational and fundamental. Thank you. Thank you. And then Don, Trisha. 
Nope, we're going to keep it in the district one and go with Rick. Okay. Let's see, uh, repeat the question one more time. Sure. A large part of leadership and governance is relationship building. How would you characterize the level of civility, collaboration, respect, and nonpartisan cooperation among board of commissioner board of commission members? Do you believe there is need for improvement? And if so, what uh, would you suggest to improve those relationships? How would you work more to bring civility and bipartisanship to board of commission? Thank you. Um, that was one of the things I talked about back in 2020. I knew then that there was a strain on the board uh, between both parties, groups. Um, I feel like my track record, I proved right from day one. Um, first day, I, when we were doing the organization meeting, I saw how they were going to help, uh, fund the health department or you know, assign the health department. And I'd looked at how they were been doing it in the past. And it was always one party, two, one from each party. And, first day I just said this isn't right and I went against my party and did vote bipartisan. I voted uh, bipartisan uh, on the uh, recycling up at the governmental center, uh, bipartisan on the septic. Um, I feel it's very important. I think we're, we've come a long ways at first, the first year it was a strain there, but I would say in the last five months I've seen a working board. Uh, we're making headway, but there's room for improvement, a lot of improvement. Um, so, I mean, just, just last week, I worked with Patricia Sotis Little on the wage, uh, wage increase for the employees. Uh, we need to see more bar bipartisan across the board from both, both sides. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Um, just to uh, Don, would you like me to reread the question? Uh, no, I think I got it. All right. I think first thing you do is start by listening and then find common ground and then go from there. And without missing the picture of what is good for Leonel County, we have to make sure all our issues are good for all of Leonel County. We may not agree on everything, but if we can just find common ground and build from there, I think that's the best way to go. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. Now we're back to um, Rick, Jamie, and Don. Okay, thank you, Tricia. Yep. Okay, Rick, um, most votes at commissioner meetings pass without opposition. In rare cases where there is disagreement, votes usually fall along party lines. How can you assure that all of your, pardon me, how can you assure all of your potential constituents that uh, you will represent all residents in your district and not just those of, uh, who are members of your party, you support a nonpartisan ballot for board of commissioner positions. And uh, I can start off where I um, started with the last one. Um, I feel like I have done a good job. I am a listener. I don't go in there. Um, when I walk in that door, I don't know how I'm going to vote. I want to listen to all sides and uh, make a decision on the issue, not on party line or how my fellow party members are gonna vote. Uh, I wanna be fair, I wanna, um, you know, and I've gone out, you gotta go out and I've talked to the other people on the other aisle. I mean, I'm not afraid to go out and make a phone call or track them down and see where they're coming from because the biggest thing I've found, whether it's in my legal career or working with the courts, it's all about communication. A lot of times when you sit down and start talking to the other party, somewhere you'll find a happy medium and maybe understand where they're coming from, they understand where you're coming from, and you can come up with a solution that's best for uh, best for everyone. Okay, thank you, Rick. Um, Jamie, would you like me to reread the question? Uh, if you wouldn't mind, just so I can get a little fresher. Sure. Most votes at commissioner meetings pass without opposition. In rare cases where there is disagreement, votes usually fall along party lines. How can you assure all of your potential constituents that you will represent all residents in your district and not just those who are members of your party? Would you support a nonpartisan partisan ballot for board of commissioner positions 
also. Uh, so I believe that um, facts are nonpartisan. I also fe believe that data is nonpartisan. Um, and I think taking all of those things and especially the community itself into account while you're making these decisions is nonpartisan. Um, it's doing what's better, best using all of the information that you are given. Um, and sometimes that is not gonna follow a party line. It's just the best decision that you can make. So you consult people who are experts, you consult the community itself, and you take all of the information and you put it together and you make a vote. And um, that's, that's what I intend on doing. Okay. Thank you, uh, Don, District 2. Would you like me to reread the question? Please. Most votes at commissioner meetings pass without opposition. In rare cases where there is disagreement, votes usually fall along party lines. How can you assure all of your potential constituents that you will represent all residents in your district and not just those who are members of your party? And would you support a nonpartisan ballot for board of commissioner positions? Um, yes, I would support that. I think that would leave a lot of issues at the door, but as far as on party, party lines, again, I might come into a meeting like when I was a trustee for Elmwood, but by the time we listened and hashed it out, you know, and we came up what's best for the people of Elmwood, in this instance, it'll be the people of Lenoir County, I will always vote that way for what's ever good for the county. Thank you. Okay. Thank you John. okay, next question. District two is up with Don Gallagher. Then uh -huh. Jamie, then Rick. Okay, so district two, uh, Don, affordable housing continues to be a problem in our region and in Leonard County. How do you believe, uh, I'm sorry, what do you believe is the county's role in addressing this issue? Uh, how would this belief impact your actions as a commissioner? I believe this question has been around for like 30 years. <laughs> and I think it becomes more of an issue of, uh, you know, maybe we do it. You know, I, I really don't know. I mean, I wanna help, but we have to figure out, you know, I've. I've wired habitat for high, uh, habitat for housing and stuff like that, but we have to figure out how we're going to do it, how we're going to fit it in the budget. You know, if it is even a budget budget issue, you know, if we have we have land, but it's been you know maybe we need to see what's working in other counties, what they're doing. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions to how they're how they're handling it and stuff, and then go from there and figure out the best way forward. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Don. All right, uh, Jamie, do you want me to reread the question? No, I think I've got it. Um, so I'm gonna second Don uh, on this one uh, about consulting other communities and maybe not even necessarily in the state, but really looking at like who has done affordable housing, workforce housing well, and how can we replicate that system within our county? Um, really focusing on, I mean, it, a lot of times I feel like we we think that we're reinventing the wheel, but we're really not. Um, I am almost certain that there is a place in the world that is, you know, maybe not completely figured this out, but at least gotten hit, and, hit some notes and, and gotten some things right. So um, my, I as I always default to, uh, you know, interviewing and, and talking to people who know more than we do, um, and then just implementing and moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, District One, uh, Rick, you want me to reread? No, no, that's okay. I have it. Um, first of all, we have to be a supporter of everybody, especially the private out there. They're the ones that are actually doing the work. I mean, they need our guidance and our support, but you know, you got Habitat for Humanity. Um, I volunteer for them now and then next uh, week, hopefully, uh, weather permitting. Uh, I've organized for our commissioners to uh, go out there and work on the Maples Crossing project. Uh, we need to get more involved. Uh, we got John Gallagher, our treasurer, we got Trudy Gala, you know, between the land bank and Brownfield, 
they're working to find this land so we can, these organizations can come in and maybe build some housing. But the serious problem we have here is in Leonard County is the average sale last year in Leonard County was 629,000. The medium range was 599. So they're competing against high prices. I don't know where we're gonna find the land. We need it. We need affordable housing out here. I mean, like the realtor says, you know, maybe not just housing, maybe we need some developments, get some rentals in here, not just for the seasonal people, but for people to live here so they can raise their children. And maybe that'd be the first step to the American dream is to, you know, to get the house later on, at least start with maybe a rental out here would help. Okay, thank you. Um, next, next, we have Jane Kramer with District 1. And then Rick Robbins and then Don Gallagher. Okay. District one, what is your understanding of the county's financial position and what would your priorities be for the 2023 and 24 budget planning process? Sure. Um, well, this is kind of something that I don't have a major grasp on yet as I'm not in the position. Um, I was just kind of looking over the budget uh, actually before we started doing this. Um, and uh, I mean, it looks sound. I, I was looking at the budget items that haven't yet been passed. Um, I am not probably in the best position to speak on this yet without fully doing a deep dive into it. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm, I'm going to default to right now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Rick, uh, District 1, would you like me to reread the question? Uh, it's about the budget for 23-24? Yes. Okay. Well, first of all, Jamie, I was in that position two years ago, so don't... <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't know. Um, no, 23-24, <laughs> I mean, we're trying to finish up 22, or excuse me, 23 right now. Um, some of the things that may be on the agenda, you know, we're in the early stages. What are we going to do with the jail? Maybe we, you know, we're just exploring, uh, you know, maybe making a juvenile center. We don't know. There's a lot of things. You know, we still have issues in the building, you know, with our heating system. Whether we're going to get that covered next year, I don't know. Um, those are probably our main things right now that we're, I can foresee right now. But, you know, being a county commissioner, who knows? Next month, who knows what's going to be on our plate? It changes every month. So, but those would be our, probably our two big things that I can foresee right now. Rick, uh, Don, District 2, would you like me to reread the question? Uh, no. And again, it's something that I'm not going to have much knowledge on. Of course, you want to have a very secure budget and everything and make everything work. But I would have to look at that also. And I just haven't looked at it yet. I apologize, but that's the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next question. Can I have the order please, Tricia? Uh, we are back to uh, district one in the first position with Rick Robbins. Okay. Then Rick. Jamie, then Don. Okay, thank you. Um, Rick, what is your understanding and position on the Benzie Leona uh, District Health Department healthcare initiatives? Do you support these initiatives? Uh, what is your position on how to fund these initiatives? Please explain. Um, I've been a supporter and you know, anything that's come up with the health department, I do not sit on those boards. Um, so I only get the information unless it's uh, on your agenda, I would support right now, I would support anything that uh, uh, they may have on the table. I mean, at first I'd have to listen to it and, and see what they wanted, you know, but uh, I mean, one of the biggest things I see with the health department right now is we may, we need to start exploring down the road for, uh, for a building for them instead of piecemealing, having part of them rent here and part of them rent here. I mean, we need to look down a 10 year plan maybe to build their facility right on our campus and. Uh, where it's convenient for everybody to come to one location. Okay. Jamie, uh, District 1, would you like the question reread? Uh, no, I think I'm good. I, uh, 
I probably don't have a full grasp of uh, what they actually need, but I did sit on a Zoom once with the Leona um, Benzie Health Department and recognized that they are really understaffed um, and it seems like they are spread super thin. So I think really like looking potentially at, you know, making some new hires or, or assisting them with the things that they need. There are so many things that they work on and are responsible for. So making sure that they have the resources um, to keep all of our uh, county and, and um, community members safe, I think is a, a really important. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Don, District 2, would you like me to reread the question? No, I, I got it too. Um, definitely agree with it 100%. I would think, you know, resources are their big things. And because they are, you know, as mentioned, stretched very thin. So as far as what, you know, Rick said about 10 years down the road, maybe that would be a plan that we need to start looking at pretty seriously because they, they do an awfully good job for what they have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next question. Um, order, please, Tricia. District two goes first. And then we have, um, after Don, we have Jamie first up in district one and then followed by Rick Robbins. Okay, so district two, uh, Don, what is your position on the county uh, government role in supporting improvement of mental health services? What measures, measures would you support or which you could not support? Well, I mean, that mental, health, it, it, mental health issue is a big, is a big problem, it, you know, everywhere. So I guess we'd have to start by saying, you know, seeing where um, do we work with Munson? Do we, you know, how do we go about um, putting everything together to help people. And again, we got to look at, again, how we're going to do that. So I would think we'd have to hire some professionals to come in and describe to us the best way forward to handle mental health issues. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> James, go on. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you. Um, uh, obviously, mental health is... Um, a huge topic right now uh, because people are suffering um, all over the place. And we are, it's difficult to find any sort of help anywhere. Um, I know that the juvenile uh, facilities have become an issue. And I also think that that is a mental health issue. Before we start, you know, putting places in the jail for kids, we should probably start looking at like the root causes of their issues what we're seeing with like their parents, their home situation, their lives. Um, there are great facilities and um, organizations that are already around the area that are working on these things. So um, maybe bringing them in like community mental health um, and potentially partnering um, with like a multi-county um, endeavor to make sure that, that these people are taken care of, I think is of the utmost importance. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Rick, District 1. I feel it's a very serious issue. Uh, you know, coming out of COVID, uh, I think it's gotten worse. I know it has. Um, you look at the courts, you know, they're, they're filled with mental health issues. Our jails, our jails are busting out of seams because they don't have the staff to give the people the services they may need for this. And uh, it's uh, very serious. And, you know, we have you know, right now we're combined with about 10 different counties and they, everybody just needs to come together and work as one. And, you know, the, the mental health board that we're on, it's no different than up at our commission meetings. I mean, it's turf wars are fighting back and forth and they just be bipartisan and work for the people. Maybe, just maybe we could put a dent in this. Okay, thank you, Rick. Okay, next question. We have uh, District 1 is up again uh, with uh, Jamie Kramer going first and then Rick Robbins followed by Don Gallagher. 
So Jamie Kramer, uh, District 1. Currently, the state of Michigan has a significant lack of appropriate out-of-home placements for juveniles within the court system. These placements could be foster home placements, treatment facilities, and detention facilities. What options might you consider in your role as county commissioner? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really think that the detention facilities should be like the last thing we're looking at. There are so many points where we could reach these kids before we put them in jail. And I think it's so important that we do because long-term it's gonna save us money as a county. Um, and not only that, it's gonna you know, keep our, our county a safer place to live and a happier place. Um, I just spoke with a friend of mine who works at CMH uh, this weekend. And he told me, he said, you know, it's not, always the majority of time it's not the kids the kids are being raised in in really difficult homes um and they're seeing abuse neglect and this is what we get so like as a community i think we need to find a way to rally together around them and give them the the resources and the um the 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 assistance that they need thank you thank you jamie so also district one uh, rick robbins do you want the question reread? Yes, if you would, please. Currently, the state of Michigan has a significant lack of appropriate out of home placements for juveniles within the court system. These placements could be foster home placements, treatment facilities, and detention facilities. What options might you consider in your role as county commissioner? Well, this issue started in about December of last year when uh, Lansing lowered the age, used to be a 17 year old, could be incarcerated. Now they're considered back being a juvenile. So when there is a issue with them, they can't go to the jail. I mean, we're trying to figure that out in Lanark County right now. You know, we have a 73 bed jail and we usually have maybe 10 inmates in there if we're not housing out from other counties. But the problem is, is we would have to empty out that jail and have no uh, pop, regular population in there. Ju the juveniles have to be separate and you're looking at staffing and everything and uh, probably redoing the whole building to make it for a juvenile facility. And when I talked to the courts today, I mean, we average about four to five cases a year, maybe 210 days a year at $250 a day. And that's on the low end. So you're looking at $50,000 to house these juvies to another detention center around the state. Um, at $50,000 a year. I mean, it's, it's, it probably wouldn't justify to redo our whole system. And we, for one, we don't know if we can do it. You know, the sheriff has statutory duties to provide a jail. If we took the jail away, where would our inmates go? So there's a lot of round table going on right now between the courts and some of the board of commissioners and the sheriff department. Uh, so there's gonna be plenty, this is gonna be on the table for a while. It's no easy fix, but uh, we're, we're, we have to deal with it. Thank you, Rick. Uh, District 2, Don Gallagher, would you like me to reread the question? No, sir, I have it. Um, the, the company I used to work for, I, I used to work in prisons, and one of them was down there in uh, Flint, and that housed kids from 13 to eight, 17 years old, and you, you just would not want your child there. It's unbelievable. But as far as this issue here, I believe it's like a state issue. We could get any help, but maybe counties around us, we get together and figure it out. I don't know how we would do it in our jail without completely separating it. And they have to be kept separate at all times. It would just be a very difficult thing to do. So thank you. Thank you. Dan. Okay, next question. Start with Don, District 2, Trisha. Uh, nope, we're back to uh, District 1 with Rick Robbins going first, then Jamie Kramer, followed by District 2. Thank you. So District 1, uh, Rick Robbins, what is your understanding of the role of County Senior Services, the County Senior Services Program? What, if anything, about this program needs to change? What would your role as a commissioner be related to this issue? As a commissioner um, for the last two years, uh, seeing them from time to time on the agenda, 
um, they're going to need a lot of support because if you look at Landau County, we have 22,000 people. Out of that 22,000, uh, 49% is over 60. So the population is not getting any younger. It's only going to get older. I mean, the scary part of that is um, our population under five years old. Uh, under five years old is only five percent out of twenty-two thousand. So uh, it shows that our, you know, our society here in Leonard County is getting older, and we're probably going to have to provide more services. But uh, you know, right now I think it's going fine. Uh, April does a great job there with her staff, and. Uh, you know, we'll have to just see where it goes, but it's, you know, it's, we're going to have to stay on top of it. So it's only going to grow. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Jamie, District 1. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think senior services in, um, a, a, with an aging population such as Leela is essential. Um, I think we need to look at all the ways that we can uh, service the population. Um, I go and visit my grandma every Sunday and uh, she is definitely getting up there, but still living independently. Um, but she needs help and she needs help with a lot of different things. She relies on um, the I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the name of the, the program to, you know, to plow her out every weekend. And, um, you know, obviously she's getting to an age where transportation is definitely something that we are going to have to look at. And this is for everyone. I mean, this is, as you get older, uh, certain things decline. And uh, we need to, especially as Americans in general, take care of our seniors way better than we do. And I, I hope that I can bring more of that to Leelanau County. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, District 2, uh, Don Gallagher, would you like me to reread the question? Uh, no, thank you. Yeah, as, as, as we pointed out, the aging population in Leelanau County, so we have to supply services or help, but, you know, sometimes it comes down to neighbors checking on neighbors, you know, you know, we know this older person lives there. Let's check, see how they're doing. You know, uh, Colleen and I take uh, Ray Weber to church every Sunday morning. He's 101 years old. He's, oh, wow. he's a World War II veteran. He's just amazing. So if people get to know older people, you know, but a lot of times, you know, with the services that are out there, but just neighbors checking on neighbors, it might be the best, best thing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, district one, uh, starting with, I'm sorry, uh, district two, starting with Don, and then uh, district one with Jamie up first, and then Rick. Okay, thank you. So district two, um, Don Gallagher, what is your position on the Leelanau County Early Childhood Millage? What do you believe is within the scope of your role as a potential commissioner regarding uh, early childhood related services? I am, I am really sorry. I, I do not have an answer for that. If it came in front of me and, you know, with the information, I would definitely study it and find out, but I don't want to try and give an answer on something I really don't know nothing about right now. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, Jamie, District 1. Sure. Uh, well, I'm going to try to answer the, the question to the best of my knowledge. Um, I, really, I, I think as a county commissioner, we're there to allocate resources um, to, to programs and programming, I think. Um, so just looking at uh, different options as, as far as like how we can assist the various programs um, that are pre-existing and what we could possibly do to um, assist up and coming programs. Um, and I, that is probably within the, the scope of my knowledge, all that I can answer on right now, but thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, District one, uh, Rick Robbins. I have to start off, uh, that was one hot potato that was thrown in my lap on January 21st was the early childhood development. I heard about it from both sides. Um, 
and it led up to September, about a year ago. Um, that was a millage that was passed by the people. Doesn't matter if it's passed by two votes or 100 votes, it, it, it passed. And it was a hot topic. And uh, the board tried to lower that millage um, and it filled the room, it filled the basement. And that's what I like about those type of meetings. I don't like the hot meetings, but when we fill that basement and we fill that room, we hear the people talk. And I watch commissioners, that's when they listen. And uh, that meeting that night, uh, we came up with three motions. And my motion was to give them 200,000, but it also saved the taxpayers 154,000 uh, for last or this year. And surprise, we knew we'd probably get a 4-3 vote, but we got a 7-0 vote, which really surprised me. But in the end, I have to say, you know, I was a young commissioner, I've learned a lot. We should have never been in that position. The people passed that in 2019, we should have never messed with it. Um, if, if they want to change, change it at the next millage. Okay. We are uh, still with District 1, uh, but with Jamie getting first uh, stab at the question followed by Rick Robbins, and then on to District 2, Don Gallagher. Okay, thank you. District 1, uh, Jamie Kramer. Nearly 45% of Leelanau families are labeled as Alice families, asset limited, income constrained, employed, and are living in poverty. What has been your experience from working with low income families and what suggestions do you have for the county's role in addressing this population? Mm. Uh, well, I was one. <laughs> um, so working in the news, um, I also worked a lot on these various topics with different organizations. I think providing a comprehensive uh, either service or list of services or a way that people can access services through one portal um, and, and kind of really uh, making sure that, that they know what's available and then also identifying the weak points and the pain points that they have throughout the county and finding out how to allocate uh, different resources to build um, those, those um, uh, specific places that, that don't exist. Um, and, then, and then giving people a comprehensive um, resource, whether it be online or in person, of what's available, I think is key. Um, because a lot of times these resources exist, but there's no one knows how to access them or they don't know that they're there. So I think information is definitely key. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. Um, Rick Robbins, District 1, do you want the question reread? Um, go ahead one more time, Mike, please. Nearly 45% of Leelanau families are labeled as Alice families, asset limited, income constrained, employed, and are living in poverty. What has been your experience in working with low income families and what suggestions do you have for the county's role in addressing this population? As far as working with the families, I deal with it every day as a court officer and it's getting worse every day. Uh, with the landlord tenant cases. I mean, last week, 43 in one day. So I see it, I'm out there every day, it's on the street. Um, in Leonard County, um, we do have programs, but we gotta network them better. We gotta probably, uh, a lot of people, we gotta show that it's okay for these people to come and ask for help. I think a lot of them are just, you know, they don't wanna be, you know, blacklisted or, you know, looked down on. Uh, we just, uh, you know, we got a lot of, you know, we got Leonard Christian's network up there. They're available. Um, we do have programs for people with the laundromat in Sutton's Bay where they can get their laundry done. Uh, but we just probably, we have the programs, but we got to get them out there and uh, um, network it more with the, everybody, the churches, the whole community. Okay, thank you. Okay, Stu, Don Gallagher. Would you like the question to reread? No, I don't think so, Mike. Thank you. But I think, you know, picking up where Rick said, it is a community thing. And the community has to come together to help people in need. 
and with the resources, with the food pantries, with clothes drives, with, oh, just, you know, just picking somebody up. I know it's getting worse and it's getting hard. Now we're going into cold weather. So if they can find out where those programs are for heat and help, I think that's really gonna be a good start. So thank you. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Next question. <clears throat> We're back to District One with Rick Robbins first, then Jamie Kramer, followed by District Two, Don Gallagher. So District One, uh, Rick Robbins, please give an example of a significant challenge you've encountered in your public life that required you to agree to a compromise to resolve the challenge. How difficult was it for you to step back from your initial position and agree to a compromise? I would say I, would, uh, I could go back to the first day I took office and walked in there. Um, I was in the middle of COVID. I was caught in the middle between uh, two aisles. Um, I was on the mask wearing. And uh, I, uh, I have my own personal beliefs, but I also know I, I'm a role model as a commissioner. I have to, this is what the guidelines were. So I went against uh, my, uh, my party that, you know, during that time and I wore my mask and uh, it was, you know, I had to compromise. I mean, I had my personal beliefs, but when I walked in that door, I had to compromise and do what was right for me as a commissioner and uh, make everybody feel safe in that meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Jamie Kramer, District One, would you like me to reread that? No, I think I'm good. Um, right. Compromise. Uh, I, I honestly, if anyone has made it uh, to any point in life and hasn't compromised, uh, how did you do it? <laughs> uh, as a business owner, as a mom, um, that is what I'm constantly doing is making compromises, especially as a business owner, because you go out and you are attempting to accomplish one thing and then you realize, oh, there's all of these roadblocks, there's things that you have to, you know, all these moving pieces and you constantly are compromising and moving uh, from your original idea into this, this kind of new hybrid uh, thing that it becomes. And I, and I really think that, you know, working with the county commission is gonna be no different. You know, you have this set thing that you're very interested in accomplishing, but then there's going to be things that 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 change and mold and move that and um, so yeah compromise woohoo <laughs> hey uh, Don uh, District Two would you like me to reread the question no no Mike thank you um, before I was elected as a trustee there was a we were trying to establish a new ordinance down in Elmwood Township and. The one that was coming out as a landowner, I didn't agree with it at all. So what we did is we called a, a meeting down at Norris School. We had two meetings, landowners as one meeting and lake, lake owners, lake lot owners, the other one. And we, we, I started out every meeting saying, we're not here to cut down a planning commission. We're not here to name names. We're here to fix the problem because like you, I didn't go to the meetings. So the planning commission thought everything was good. So we, together as groups, we came together with what we'd like to see in the ordinance. And as far as my side, I didn't get as far as what I wanted for selling lots, but overall it worked very well. You know, we, uh, we were very successful and we kept it nice and peaceful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next okay. question. Uh, We're back to District 2 with Don, and then um, District 1, Jamie, and District 1, Rick Robbins. Okay, so uh, Don Gallagher, District 2. Um, the Great Lakes contain 20% of the world's fresh surface water, 86% of Leelanau County is water. 
Do you believe that current policies provide adequate protection for county surface and groundwater resources? What do you believe falls within a county commissioner's responsibilities and jurisdiction for water protection? Well, I would think, you know, we'd have to start with, you know, runoff water. Where is runoff water going and, and stuff? So the, of course, the septic system was a good start to protect it. But I mean, that's a, boy, I don't know where I'd start with that. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm drawing a blank. I just apologize. I, I'm good, thank you. Fine, thank you. I apologize. That's okay. Um, Jamie, District One, do you want me to reread the question? No, I think I, I've i got it. Um, again, I, I believe we're allocating resources. So I think that we need to like talk, we have a, an amazing group of people here in Northern Michigan who are working on these uh, specific uh, issues surrounding water. There's the watershed center, there's flow. So I think really taking uh, their information and incorporating it into what we are looking at um, their, you know, their studies that they have done, um, like, you know, Don was saying runoff, like, what are, what are we looking at for runoff? What are we looking at for farm runoff? What are, what, what are, what is it causing, you know, down the line invasives? How do we, how do we tackle invasive species? Um, all of these things, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We just need to bring in people who know more than we do and who, uh, who have the information readily available and just incorporate that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, District One, Rick Robbins, do you want me to reread the question? Yes, one more time, please. The Great Lakes contain 20% of the world's surface, uh, fresh surface water. 86% of Leelanau County is water. Do you believe that current policies provide adequate protections for county surface and groundwater resources? What do you believe falls within a county commissioner's responsibilities and jurisdiction for water protection. Well, we did start uh, with the septic ordinance just in the last month. Um, our water, we do have, we got the drain commissioner, he's working on drain districts to uh, around the county to uh, prevent the uh, runoff. Uh, you got the extension, they're teaching farmers how to farm better so uh, we don't have the uh, runoff like they used to where they're losing land and uh, crops and what have you. Um, as far as us as a commissioner, um, there's not much you know that we could do. I mean, we can oversee it, but you know, it comes from what, probably gonna come more from Lansing and even at the federal level. Uh, um, but we're all gonna, it's, it's gonna take a group effort. We all have to work on it. You know, it's not just, uh, just the feds or the state, but uh, you know we we're working with uh, Lake Lanao to prevent the weeds there. Uh, it's just you know, like I said, every every year is something different. So it's a continuous uh, journey here that we got to stay on top of. Okay, thank you. Next question. We have um, room for. Uh, two more questions, I think, before we go to closing statements, just to let our please um, know you're almost you're nearing the finish line. Hang in there. Um, and for this next question, uh, District One is up first with Jamie Kramer, then Rick Robbins, followed by District Two, Don Gallagher. Okay. So District One. Um... Jamie Kramer, what is your understanding of the state mandate, mandated responsibilities of county government and where do you stand on offering county services above those services mandated by the constitution? Hmm. Gosh, I wish I could ask more questions about that question. <laughs> um, hmm. Can you repeat it again? I might just decline on this, but we'll see if I can get it. Go ahead. Uh, what is your understanding of the state mandated responsibilities of county government? Okay. Where, 
Where do you stand on offering county services above those mandated by the state? Oh, okay. Uh, so where do I stand on going above uh, our mandated job, basically? Um, I mean, I think if there's a need and there's a community need, then we need to fill it. Um, I think it's our job. Uh, I mean, I, I look at my job as a mom, you know, uh, I probably have mandated <laughs> responsibilities for my children, but every once in a while I try to go above and beyond um, those responsibilities because things are important. And I think when you're taking care of the community, you need to come in and uh, sometimes, you know, just the mandates aren't enough. And um, we also, I think like as a general rule, we need to start like looking at rules as frameworks, right? Like, and and just accordingly, because sometimes the thing that we absolutely need isn't just written. Sometimes we have to move around those things or or through those things. Um, and I I think that's one of these issues. So I hope I answered it appropriately. Thank you. Thank you, uh, District One, Rick Robbins. Do you want the question reread? Yes, please. Does your understanding of the state mandated responsibilities of county government and where do you stand on offering county services above those mandated by the state? I guess one of the ones I can think of right up top of my head is right now what we're dealing with with the juveniles that's a mandated and you know we're we're stuck with it but we got to come up with something that fits our budget and we're still providing the services and uh, you know um, do the best we can uh, um, you know we can probably do it at our county level up here but I, I can see a lot of counties where you know where the state comes in and mandates and it's hard on their budget uh, we're probably fortunate whatever mandate may come up that you know we do have the personnel and we will adjust to it and do whatever we need to do to make it work Okay, thank you, Rick. Um, District two, Don Gallagher. Well, I believe a mandate is the starting point. And if we need to go above that mandate for the health and safety and welfare of Leonard County, I think we have to try to do it. You know, we have to try to meet all people's needs if we have to go above this. But I just, the mandate is definitely, we have to abide by it, but it, at some point, or we might see it, that's just a starting point. And I believe if we have to go over it for the greater good, I think we have just have to do it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. This is our last question before uh, closing statements. And we are uh, with District 1. Rick Robbins will go first, followed by Jamie Kramer, and then uh, Don Gallagher from District 2. Okay. District 1, um, Rick Robbins. Uh, describe your F, pardon me, I'll back up. Uh, describe your involvement in your local government and your past and present efforts to serve community. Is it, uh, did you say uh, past and present? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I could start with uh, past. Uh, back in early 2000, I was on the Parks Board at Grand Traverse. My involvement at uh, Leonel level has been, well, as county commissioner and um, the, did serve on the beta board till recently and um, on the finance board and, uh, um, and just, uh, Right now, just uh, you know, being a county commissioner is my service to the county. Okay, District One, um, Jamie Kramer. Uh, yeah, can I uh, just hear the um, entirety of the? I do kind of understand the gist, but I wanted to just there's a detail. Could you repeat it? Thank sure. you. Sure. Um, describe involvement, local government, and your past and present efforts to serve your community. Okay, awesome. Um, well, I'll, I I feel like it, it became a problem. You could probably talk to my husband. Um, like we need to work for pay <laughs> instead of just volunteering all the time. Um, 
So I created, uh, we planted 800 trees at the, um, after the 2015 storm. So I coordinated an effort to do that. Um, we did bras for a cause. I used to the host for them. Um, we, at the uh, opera house, we used to have picnic at the opera where um, we raised money for the opera house. Um, when the storm in Puerto Rico happened, we rallied uh, the entire community to uh, drop off goods at the, the open space and, and then distributed them on the island. Um, even right now, I'm trying to um, attempt to change how we grieve and, and how our community comes together at the end of life. Um, so uh, those are efforts that I am really passionate about. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Don Gallagher, District 2. Um, from coaching Pop Warner football to being coordinator of baseball and softball for Elmwood Township summer base summer ball. Uh, volunteering down at St. Mary's Church and School for many, many functions to being on the Planning Commission for Elmwood Township and being elected as a trustee. It's, it was all satisfactory, you know. Um, since then, we've, you know, our biggest thing is, like I mentioned, taking Ray to church. The man is just amazing. But kind of since we planted the orchard and started the cherry farm our time has been limited we like to help out friends and neighbors of course if we can you know if somebody calls with a problem we try to go i try to go but it's it's all been satisfactory you know so thank you okay thank you all right um time for closing remarks trisha we have uh, in reverse order of how we started. We will begin with District 2, Don Gallagher will give his closing uh, statement comments first, followed by uh, Jamie Kramer of District 1, and then Rick Robbins will get to go last. Okay, so these are closing remarks from our candidates. Um, <laughs> Each candidate has two minutes. So we'll begin with District 2 candidate, uh, Don Gallagher. Don, your closing remarks, please. Well, that was fun. <laughs> People ask me, why are you running for county commissioner? My answer is much has been given to Colleen and I, to our ancestors, to our immediate family. We have been truly blessed. The opportunity to enjoy hard work, love of life, and to farm this beautiful land, being chief among those. It has been said that to one who has much has been given, that much is required. I'm running for District 2 County Commissioner because it's time for me to give back. No needy family or senior should have to consider cleaning crops and fields to put food on the table. No essential worker should have to live in another county to work here. All aspects of health, safety, and welfare of Leonel County citizens could certainly be approved upon. I will not shy away from any questions, problems, or issues from District 2 or Leno County faces tonight or in the future. If elected, I will serve to the best of my ability so well that it might amaze some of my Republican family members. I thank you for allowing me to participate in tonight's event and the support of the voters in District 2. I look forward to serving with distinction on the board of commissioners and hope to make Leno County more responsible to its residents' needs. And also register to vote, win or lose, I want a big turnout for midterms because then I know our democracy is working. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Don. Uh, District two, uh, District one, um, Jamie Kramer, uh, your closing statement, please. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Judge Michael, and thank you, Tricia. And uh, Don, thank you so much. And Rick, uh, it's really nice to meet you, finally. Um, I would just like to, to say that uh, as probably, I think the youngest person who might be running, um, I would like to have uh, more people like myself who are in these positions. Um, we are busy, 
we have kids, we have jobs, we have things going on, but we need to be represented. We need to not only be represented for us, but for our children, um, because really these, those are the people that we're making these decisions for. Um, my business focuses on legacy. And what mm -hmm. I really, really want is to make decisions that really can last. Um, because this, as I was out knocking door to door, I met a Detroit couple, couple who uh, told me that they had no issues, that this place was perfect. And I think that we need to take that into account too. We know it's not perfect. We know we need to improve on it, but there are, there is a lot of perfection here in Leelanau County. And I think we need to, to really focus in on that. Also, um, creativity. I'm really hoping, because I enjoy figuring out hard problems. I know that I'm not the person who knows all the things. I know that I'm not um, probably going to have all the answers. However, there are resources and there are people. I like to think of myself as a liaison who, uh, who works with others to kind of bring them in at the right points and, and, and times. Um, and, and so that's really what I'm hoping to bring to the county is a lot of other people who know more than I do um, to get the, the job done and uh, to, to keep uh, that Detroit couple in perfection. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, um, Jamie. Rick, also District 1, closing statements. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank everyone that was involved tonight, uh, Trish, Mike, uh, Jamie, Don. Uh, it's been a great time. Um, it's been a great two years. I've learned a lot, um, learned a lot fast. Um, I would like another term. Um, I can tell the people that uh, I will continue being the same Rick that shows up there. I will listen. I will be bipartisan. I will do what's best for the people. And uh, like I say, it's been a great time. We got a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, still got broadband to finish up. Uh, new administrators coming in. Uh, so we, we may be going in a different direction. Uh, um, whoever that administrator may be, um, you know, I'd like to work on uh, maybe, you know, since we are, we do have an aging population up here. Uh, no one's ever looked at, uh, getting with the health people and maybe get a walk-in clinic at Lake Lilna or uh, Sutton's Bay. So our people don't have to drive to Muncie ER and wait six hours. Um, it's just little things we got to work on. Um, I want to close with it. So uh, I want to thank everybody, uh, Don and Jamie. I want to say I was in your shoes. And uh, um, if you guys are elected, I'm here to help you when you get take office and I'll help you any way I can to make it an easy transition. So uh, thank you to everybody. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Um, so Tricia, do you have some closing remarks? I do. Um, I, I just want to say how um, fortunate our community is to have individuals such as the candidates that we've heard from this evening that are willing to serve. Um, we don't have any bad choices here tonight, and I hope no one takes that as an endorsement or a opposition to any candidate. Um, I just say it's uh, going to be a tough choice um, for our voters. Um, in regard to your tough choice, um, I would encourage you all to check out vote411.org. It's an online service. Um, it is in it includes an online nonpartisan voting guide of all the candidates that are running for office that have submitted uh, answers to questions. Um, in their own words. Um, you can also uh, gather information on the proposals that will appear on your ballot and other need to know information, um, as was mentioned, like how do I register to vote? Um, where can I register to vote? Where do I vote? How can I vote? Uh, whether you're needing to use an absentee 
ballot or voting in person. Um, you can find out that and more at vote411.org. Also expect um, to uh, see in the next week or two uh, printed versions of the Vote 411 Voter Guide um, at your local library um, and other businesses and locations who agree to let us distribute them. Um, recordings of this forum, in addition to uh, forums on the ballot proposals, the Supreme Court justices, um, are available online at lwvalilanot.org, as well as uh, Travers Area Community Media on their Facebook page and will be broadcast on Spectrum Channel 189. Have a plan for voting and remember to vote in the November 8th general election. Democracy is not a spectator sport. It needs all of us participating to work. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, Mike, do you have any last things that you'd like to share? Uh, yes, Tricia, thank you. So again, okay. I'd like to tonight um, from District 1, Rick Robbins and Jamie Kramer, District 2, Don uh, Gallagher. So thanks very much for participating uh, this evening. And thank you again to the Travers Area Community Community Media, the Leelanau Enterprise, and the League of Women Voters of Leelanau County for making this uh, forum possible. We thank you for taking the time, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to listen and learn about your candidates. So thank you very much, uh, and have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.